What's the deal, man? RJ Lamont in the building. RJ always tripping. You know, we just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard, man. Detroit in the building. Alright, so we got my boy RJ Lamont back on off the boards for the second time, man. Second time, second time. Hey, I'm happy to be back too. Yeah, well, welcome back, bro. Appreciate yeah. you, appreciate you every time. Absolutely, man. Yeah, so first off, how are we feeling today, man? I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm enjoying Atlanta. Atlanta's nice. Atlanta's nice. It's just the traffic. I don't really like the traffic. The traffic's horrible, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Especially I know. this time of the day. Yeah, my bad for telling you to show up at like 430. <laughs> I knew you were going to be late, so everyone's late to these interviews, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is what it is at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm late to everything, though. People usually like, I know like with my airport rides, when we book flights, like when the artists I DJ for, when we have to like go somewhere, they have to book me the earliest possible flight just in case I miss two. In case you miss two flights. Yeah, then I can still make the show. <laughs> well, it's a new year. Maybe you can start working on being on time. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> book the earliest one. You got to book me like the, the 6 a.m. one because I might miss that one because it's so early. I was going to say, those are the easiest ones to miss is when it's that early. Yeah, but if I'm already there, you know, next one uses like 7 or 8. That's true. Then That's if you miss true. that one, the next one like 1 or 2. But once you get to like four or five, you might miss the show. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what brings you to Atlanta? What else are you working on while you're in the city uh, this time? Uh, I came out here to, uh, I really came out here to, I came out here to see y'all. And then I, uh, I'm signed to a label, I'm signed to Ultra. So hmm. I came out here to see my label, see what they're doing, check in on them, work with some producers, do a bunch of music, keep it going. Okay. Uh, Ultra, I'm not familiar, man. Put me on, like, how, how did that situation come about? Uh, I, I got it through Kenny. Kenny uh, hooked me up with Ultra, and then I've been rocking with them since. I've been rocking them for a few years. Okay. I think last time I came out here was like when I signed to them or something. Oh, really? But that was like admin, and we recently, they recently re-switched me over to Co-Pub. So now I got a Co-Pub with them. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Man. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's a brand new year. How are we feeling about 2024, RJ? I'm already loving it. 2024, well, a few days into the year, and I'm already in Atlanta. I'm already traveling. <laughs> I brought in the new year in New York. Oh, really? Yeah, I seen the ball drop. Oh, what? At Times Square? Yeah. You yeah. went through all them people and all that? Man, that, it's crazy. And we shot a video, but it's crazy because like <laughs> them little, they, they make people stand in them bullpens and people wait like, people be standing outside from 8 a.m. and it's like yeah, 30 degrees. Man, and then when you're in the bullpen, you can't come out. So if you gotta like go to the bathroom, you gotta just go to the bathroom by yourself. What? Just right there in the just bullpen? Just right there, just right there. The po like most people say like it's like a it's like a once in a lifetime thing, but it's like a once you do it once, you never want to do it again. Exactly. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, my wife is from New York, and I was asking her, she's like, "Yeah, you don't you know you don't want to go to Times Square." Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Man, we shot a video though when the ball dropped. Uh, me oh, and Baby Tron. Yeah. yeah. I saw that. Yeah, it's already over. It was like last time I checked, it was like trending like twenty five on YouTube, and it's mm. already over a half a million views. Shit. Yeah. So it's doing good. Yeah. That's something you won't do again though, huh? I mean, <laughs> we wasn't like in the bullpens. No, no, no. Our hotel was right outside Times Square. So we just oh, walked okay. outside. Well, that makes it a little easier then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. But it was smooth. Different vibes, you know? Yeah, Good yeah, way yeah. to kick off the year. Mm-hmm. And how would you describe your 2023? Because it looked like you was everywhere. You did everything you could possibly think of uh, in 2023. Literally, literally. So I, I was... I was 2023, I toured maybe six or seven months out the whole entire year. Shoot. And then three of those, three months after that, I just traveled around, like just doing stuff like this. And then the last two months, I just spent with my kid, basically. Mm -hmm. So 2020, 2023 was lit. It was turned. But 2024 is only going to get better. But I would say 23 was probably best year of my life. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next to 2016. What happened in 2016? That's when all the music stuff started blowing up yeah. around 2016. That's when everything just started going good. Hmm. So I put 2016 to 2023 right next to each other. Okay. Then you got to put the pandemic year under that because the pandemic was the best year of everybody's life. <laughs> Especially in Detroit, I hear. Oh my God. I bought my, the car I got now, I bought off that. Did you really? Literally. <laughs> um, so let, let's go to Baby Tron. How did that connection first happen? Because I understand like you was believing in Tron before anyone else. Yeah, it's crazy because it, it goes a little bit further back. His, his manager, who's Lando, mm -hmm. Lando the Hip Hop Lab, Lando used to intern for me when he was younger. And he always told me if he ever had an opportunity for me, he was always going to look out for me. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward, he ended up signing Baby Tron. But it go a little bit crazier than that because at the time, my dad had died. And when my dad died, I had moved to Mexico. 
So I moved to Mexico and Orlando called me to come DJ for Baby Tron. And at the same time, my girlfriend was kicking me out the house and sending me back to America. So she sent me to America. <laughs> How do you get sent to America? <laughs> she said, you gotta go. She said, you gotta go. Go back to America. Go DJ for Baby Tron. You're not staying here though. And I've been on the road with him since. This has been like three years now. Oh, wow. What, yeah. what year was that? That uh, what was that like 2017, 2018 that you met Tron then? Or? I met him in like 2017, okay. but I started DJing for him in 2021. Okay. Yeah. So how did that opportunity come back? You got just built up a relationship at that point or? His, his manager was Lando. Yeah. And La Lando said he had this opportunity and he, he wanted to call me first and it just, we just rocked out like that. Me and Tron had kind of already had a connection because Tron grew up listening to my music. So he was already like light working with me and stuff. So he didn't have a problem with it. And yeah, from then we just been locked in. Like we've been locked in heavy. Like I'm with him almost every day. He's coming out here tomorrow. Oh, for real? Yeah, I should have him pull up. I was gonna say, yeah. yeah. He's coming out here tomorrow night. Okay, okay. So three years of touring with him. Do you guys start at the clubs at first? Like what do you guys, what type of shows are you guys doing with them? Nah, since the first show, we, we only do like shows, like with people sitting down, like concerts. <laughs> at venues. Right? Yeah, okay. so we only do concerts. And since the first show, I've never done a show with Baby Tron that hasn't been sold out. Like not one. Like I haven't. I don't remember one show that wasn't sold out. What are these crowds like? Cause he's got a very diverse fan base too. Oh, uh, I crowd surf every show. I see that. <laughs> every show I crowd surf. Like every show. Like so you see like crazy stuff. It's like it's almost like an EDM crowd that likes rap music. <laughs> literally, literally. Cause when we do EDM festivals, they want us to do rap music too. They be saying free reel at the EDM festivals. Really. Literally. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's, it's nice. It's, I love it. I love it. I ain't gonna lie. It's the best job I've ever had. Hmm. Do you remember the first time you crowd surfed? Yeah. Yeah. It was scary. Oh, was I was scary. gonna say, that's gotta be the scariest <laughs> one. You put a lot of trust in, you know, people you don't know. <laughs> Man, it was scary. It was scary. It was scary. But so I just learned my trick is I walk to the side. I say, who, who I want to crowd surf. Who's going to catch me? Then I walk to the side and say, who's going to catch me? Then I walk to the side, who's going to catch me? Whoever has the most hands, I go to that side. Oh, for real? That's how you them. choose? <laughs> so how did that first one go? Success? Like, it was a success. It was a okay. success. The first one was a success. But I've seen some bad ones. You've like, seen some bad ones or you've experienced some bad ones? Seen. Like Danny G. Oh my God. We, we, call it, we say Danny G crowd drowns every time. <laughs> <laughs> he just jump in the crowd and he just drowns it to just the like, People just back away? <laughs> every time. <laughs> What, what, what's like the longest he was able to crowd surf? Or is that some point you just like put me down? Uh, front to back. Yeah, I went front to back before over oh, a thousand really? people. Oh, shit. For sure, for sure, for sure. One time I jumped in the crowd and dropped my buffs. And, <laughs> and this I knew I liked DJ for Baby Tron. One of the fans gave me my buffs back. He picked them up and gave he them He picked them up and said, hey, I found these for you. <laughs> then I seen the same kid, because this was in like Philly last year. I seen the same kid in New Mexico last year. He went, to, he went to both shows? Yeah. God damn. Yeah, it was crazy. That's a, you know, that's a devoted fan right there. Man. Unless he's got family in both places. Or it. Nah, they travel around. Shoot. They travel. Hmm. Yeah. What's been one of the wildest things you've seen at a Baby Tron show? Then? What's the wildest thing we've seen at a Baby Tron show? I know something that I can't say on camera, but the, the thing I can say on camera is um, like when this, the, what would you say you would call the um, special needs or handicap? Mm -hmm. I've seen like, I've seen a dude in a wheelchair get picked up by the whole crowd. His wheelchair is over here and he's over here. <laughs> <laughs> then I've seen someone with, I want to say it's called autism. Is that where the arms are in the things? No, I don't think that's autism. What's that called? When it, cerebral palsy. Okay. I see someone with cerebral palsy in the middle of the mosh pit. And I told them to let her out the mosh pit. And she said, no, I'm she staying right no. here. Start the mosh pit, RJ. And yeah, that was crazy to me. And the whole time, I'm like, yo, I promise y'all not going to hurt her. They're like, yeah, we not going to hurt her. <laughs> Start the mosh pit. What song starts a mosh pit? You got like a go-to song? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. My go-to song to start the mosh pit is S S S Tentacion, Fucked Up. Okay. <laughs> I, I never even heard this song before I started mosh pit DJing. <laughs> so Listen. who put you on to it? Um, 
I think I went and seen somebody else DJ. Oh, really? Like the opener before me played it, okay. and I was like, oh, I'm going to play that. So I played it one time, and it started the mosh pit every time. Huh. Every time. A random song that I like the mosh pit to, though, is uh, T Grizzly, First Day Out. Okay. Yeah. I can see, I can see that. Yeah. 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 And now you guys are doing like festivals as well. Yeah. What's the difference? Like, is there a difference in preparation for a festival compared to like a, an arena or a venue? Mm, most of the time we'll be on tour and the festival comes usually towards the end of the tour. Hmm. So by that time we've practiced the set so many times that okay. it's just like, it's used, and the crowds in the festivals are usually easier, not to be honest. Like it's, just, it's, it's usually a little easier because it's like your know, adrenaline be rushing so much when you see 50,000 people. That's it. <laughs> But my, uh, my little preparation for any show before I do it is like three shots of tequila. <laughs> three shots? Yeah, three shots is my limit. After three, I start acting crazy after the show. <laughs> What's your go-to tequila right now? Uh, Casamigo, Resposado. Ooh, you still on the Casamigo. Ooh. Yeah, 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 still on the Casamigo wave. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you prefer festivals because there's that many people or do you prefer like a more intimate set in like some of these venues? Mm, they, they two different crowds. Festivals be having more stuff going on and you get moved around a lot. So it's like that. But like like a, a regular like Tron show is just like our fans. So yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I kind of like that because they, they just ready. <laughs> they waited all year for this. I'm like, all right, come on. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can crowd surf at a festival, can you? Yeah, you that's can? the best time to crowd surf. Oh, really? <laughs> you might get lost. But I, I, I can't crowd say, surf. Like, they might send you off. Yeah, I'm going to say, I'm the DJ, so I can't do it because what happens if the song end? Yeah, I got to play the next song. That was another thing. Like, do you have something queued up already? <laughs> no, no, no. I have to do it quick. You got to give me quick. Give me back because I got to change the song. <laughs> uh, what Tron song gets, like, the best reaction? all of them but uh, <laughs> is it um, different for each show pretty much no nah, but i say at the time the most popular one when we last time we was touring was a to z okay a to z was real big but uh jesus shuttlesworth is always a classic hmm. that's the first one that's always gonna be a classic but a to z and 100 bars is kind of good too yeah. okay yeah now he drops so much music how often do you guys change the the set list to be honest, not often. Really? Because you, you, gotta, you, you still got to think, like, some of these, we change it once a year. I, yeah, not often. Not often, no. Okay, just once a year, huh? Yeah, basically, because it's usually, like, some new songs come out, or once every album. Once okay. the album come out, we usually, like, take two songs away from the set that we already had, add two more. But some of these songs be, like, classics. It's like, yeah. you would be mad if you went to a Tron show and he didn't do Jesus Shuttlesworth. <laughs> so you can't take that one out. That was yeah. very true. So you mentioned touring, what, like six months out the year. What's the best and what's the worst things about being on the road that much? The worst thing about being on the road is you miss your bed. That's like the number one worst thing. Like, you just don't realize how much you respect sleeping in your own bed until you're away from it for three months. Then you're like, bro, I just want to go home and just lay in my bed. But the best thing about it is like just driving through the country. Like, you get to see the whole country. Like, like, like I remember driving through like, on the way to like Utah or Colorado, something, something in that area. And I just remember like on one side of the world, like the mountains was frozen, the other side it was like red and like hot. And I'm just like, this is crazy. <laughs> so you get to see stuff that you ain't never seen before you, or stuff that you just wouldn't see, like going to like Nebraska, like why would I be in Nebraska? <laughs> so that's like the best part about it. So you guys are still driving to all these shows, right? Or is it kind of flying around too? Or for the most part, you all in the tour bus? Cause most, cause yeah, we drive. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause it'd be like day after day after day or something yeah, exactly. like that, three days in a row. And then it'd be like 20 of us. True. So yeah, it's just a little bit easier to drive. And then we were having a merch with us. Hmm. So it's a little, it's a, it's a nice little process. Yeah. It ain't that bad though. It could be worse. Hmm. And his new tour is about to start off, right? Yeah, in like two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, Jesus Christ. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been home since October. I feel like it's been fat. Ever. <laughs> so you ready? You got yes. this I'm getting point, tired huh? of looking at my same four walls of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys hitting like the same cities or is there any new cities on this tour? No, it's all new cities on this tour, I think. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, some of them is still main, like Atlanta, yeah. New York. Like we still hit some of those, but then I think it's other ones too, like Baltimore, I think it's on there. I've never been to Baltimore. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And what's it like working in the studio with John? Uh, he got that same process. Like, I, 
trying the process of working on the studios, he records himself, he mixes himself. So all I gotta do is make the beats before he get there or just like pull a beat up, pull the beat up, pull the beat up. And he just, but he, he can do just like that same process that I, I told you about all the Detroit rappers. He can do 10 songs in six hours, five hours, four oh, wow. hours, like type thing. Like we, we never leave the studio without doing eight to 10 songs. Like, Jeez. so he's always working. But the only, the thing that's crazy about him to me is that like, for him to be so big of a rapper, he mixes his own music, he records himself, he do, like, he do it all by himself, and it's like, that's crazy that you're doing all this by yourself. And do you guys record a lot when you're on the road, too? Yeah. Or not too much? Yeah, he yeah. always record. We always get studio time. We'll just get a studio and just book it out and just be there for hours. Okay. Especially, like, when we just pull up to a random city like Oklahoma. What else we going to do all night? <laughs> what else we going to do in Oklahoma? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you previewed this project. I don't know if it's a project or a song with uh, damn John Boy, I Am Legend. Yeah, that's dropping, I want to say the date. The date is... It was supposed to be last Wednesday. month. So. It's Wednesday. It's dropping the 10th okay. of January, January okay. 10th. Yeah, it was supposed to be last month, but once I submitted it to labels, it just took longer. Hmm. So. so is it a project? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's 10 okay. songs. It's come out uh, January 10th. All bangers, half produced by me, half produced by John Boy. Oh, shit. And yeah, it's going to be a classic. Huh. Yeah, and right after that, we're coming back with the EP with uh, Baby Tron. Really? Yeah, and then after that one, I think it's we doing another compilation with a bunch of artists. Oh wow! So I got like my next three months worth of CDs already. I was prepared. gonna say that, that these are already finished. Yeah, because I wanted to be dropping while we're touring. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what was it like? Uh, you know, did you and John Boy get in the studio for these? Yeah, we was in the studio for three days straight, for oh, wow. sure, three days straight. And his recording process, I didn't know he could record that many songs that fast. He was doing five <laughs> songs a day. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so, and then we was cooking up together too, like making beats together. And to see his beat process, like he, he makes beats with headphones on still to this day. Really? Yeah, like he, he won't make beats with you unless he wears headphones. So what, you gotta wait till he's done for you to hear it then? <laughs> yeah, and then you gotta put the headphones on to do your part. <laughs> oh, he wants you to wear the headphones too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's wild. That's old school right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, last year you put out the world's smallest violin, man. Mm -hmm. Was that an easy project to put together or was that something you had just been stacking songs for a while and decided to throw them out there? Or what was the creative process for that one? That was so, like stacking songs. It was more stacking songs. It was because I was trying to put my CD together and over time, by the time I was able to put it together, it became just stacking songs. Mm -hmm. But once I put it together, yeah, that was, that was the last real song I had. Oh, I was going to ask about that too. <laughs> That's the last real song I had. So I was trying to hold on to it as long as possible. <laughs> It'd be tripping me out. He just had a video drop the other day and I'm like, how much music and videos Bro, did this tripping? man record before he had to turn himself in? I was just in the car riding to New York and somebody sent me a song from Rio where he was rapping over the phone. He's recording in jail. Yeah, I think he just did some for uh, Big Moochie Grape that, and he was rapping over the phone for this. Show. Yes, he said he'd be, ra he'd be rapping over the phone with the beats and everything, just sending them out. Just send them to his homeboys like, hey, you like this? How this sound? And the songs be hard. And I'm like, damn, how's he doing this? That shit wild, man. Yeah. Free Rio, man. Free Rio, man. Rio to go. Yeah. So what up RJ part two, man? Do you remember that session? Yeah, that was the same session as, <laughs> we did that the same day as we did What Up RJ Part 1. Oh, for real? Y'all yeah. did them back to back? Yeah, and then we just picked one that we wanted to go with. So we did Part 1 and ran with that one. And I was just holding on to it because I didn't even know if I was going to use it. Hmm. And then it took so long. For, I didn't know when he was coming home, so I was like, I got to finish my next project. So I, need, I needed a lead single. And I knew that was when it was going to go crazy. Oh, I that shit went wild. Yeah. It's going crazy. There's over, like, over 5 million streams. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you had um, you had Baby Tron on the tape too, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got a whole tape about to drop with Baby Tron. I think I got like six or seven songs. Oh wow. Yeah. So that's gonna be fire too. What type of vibes is that on? Uh, just RJ vibes, RJ beats. This is literally <laughs> all my beats. Like, it's all the songs that me and him been recording over the past year that he's not uh, putting on his album. Okay. So we just gonna release them through me. Yeah. You guys got a title picked out for the EP? RJ Lucky, I fuck with him. Are you serious? Is that really <laughs> yeah. the name of this? That's hard as it though. <laughs> <laughs> so your next compilation, uh, you got a title for that one? Uh, not yet. I ain't go that far. I only got the 
the John Boy one finished and the Baby Tron one. Okay. Yeah, the John Boy one's gonna be crazy. Those called I Am Legend. Yeah. Um, did you guys shoot any videos off of I Am Legend? Uh, we shooting two videos and we shoot them this week. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. We're gonna put a CD out first and then shoot them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the compilation, like, can you give us any artists that are gonna be on it? Oh, for sure. Draco and Bino, um, Draco and Bino, Nook, Baby Tron, John Boy again. I'm trying to get a T Grizzly and a Babyface race on. That'd be crazy, right there. Yeah, that's the two I'm working on right now. Yeah. So for these songs, are you just reaching out to the artists, like, hey, jump on this for my album, or is this just songs once again that you just had been sitting on, or? Yeah, I'm reaching out to them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'd be having to pay them, but I just, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be, uh, but I'm signed to a label, so, you know, my, my, my budget, the label give me a budget to put these albums out. And I'm sure that helps speed up the process, too. Yeah, hell yeah. you may send an artist a beat and, <laughs> you know, tell them what it's for. Then, yeah, I'm going to jump on it. You know, a couple months go by. You go ahead and, you know. Yeah. There go a few racks, man. Go, yeah. No, they go these, jump on that shit. Then you right see away. the prices these artists be telling you, and you like, do people really pay you this? <laughs> <laughs> then it's like, oh, I get it. Because I'm signed to a label, the label will just pay it. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully you get the RJ price at least, right? No? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to know what a T Grizzly first would cost. Man. <laughs> that's going to be out of here, man. Um, so you think that's going to drop this summer or the springtime? Or? Uh, I'm trying to drop it by March, for, to be oh, honest. Sure. I'm trying to do January, February, March. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the tour ends when? In March or February? Yeah. Okay. And then I could uh, start on the next projects for my next tours, like over the summertime. Oh, shit. It's just nonstop. You know, that's festival season, too. It's summertime. Mm -hmm. Festival season is the best time of the year. Yeah. Yeah, I love that time. Is Tron already booked for some that you can reveal? Um, I don't know if I can reveal any. I know we usually do Summer Smash every year, and we probably do all of the Rolo Wilds. Yeah. Except this one coming up that's in... March, I want to say. Is that which one's in March? Roll Aloud. One yeah. of them rolling out. So we do this. We do every Roll Aloud except one this year. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> they really fucking with them. <laughs> man, man, I've been traveling. That's all I've been doing since last time I seen you. I just been on the road. I know. I, I looked at your page like, God damn, yeah. RJ is everywhere. <laughs> He's in every city, man. <laughs> like, how would you describe your journey these past ten years? You know. Or what she said, since 2016? Man, yeah, all right, that's getting close. But it, it's, been, it's been up and down. It's been, it ain't really been up and down, it's been up, but it's, it's, been, it's been crazy. I would say the craziest parts has been, yeah, it's like, no, it's like every year, as Detroit music get better, my life get better. Hmm. Like from 2016 when it was first getting started, but then you see like in 2023 now, like Detroit music is like mainstream now. Oh yeah, so it's, it's worldwide just, at this point. Yeah, so it just made me mainstream. So it was <laughs> like, it's just, it's just been better. Like every year it gets better. And then this year it even gets even better because this year we uh, about to start doing uh, internationals. I mean, ain't that international? International tour? We trying to go or overseas. Festival, yeah. We starting to go overseas this year. Oh shit. Yeah. That's gonna be major right there. Yeah, I know. You ready know. for that? <laughs> The only thing I'm not ready for is the street food. <laughs> I don't think I want to try that stuff. You be seeing Super Ray's page, like all that oh, shit. Oh, man, all oh, day. He make me never want to go to India. <laughs> yeah, it's like some of that shit, like, yeah, I'm, I'm good on that shit. Like. Man, man, that's crazy. You know me and Super Ray was in the same class in high school. For real? Was he always that funny, too? Yeah, biggest person. <laughs> Couldn't play basketball for nothing. For real. <laughs> Yeah, because Zip, you know, Zip fucks with him heavy, too. So, like, he's on, like, his 14th page. We followed all 14 pages. So, <laughs> yeah. actually see him blow up, it's like, God damn, finally. You know finally. what I'm <laughs> It's a great man to delete you so many times. Man, man. I seen he just crossed a million followers or something. I'm like, he's at 1.5 million. That's crazy. Yeah, he'd be yelling, like, oh, I want these people to tag me. I'm like, bro, you got more followers than them. <laughs> <laughs> you should be tagging them. <laughs> right. Super Ray, can I get a shout out? <laughs> Nah, I love to see that shit too, man. Uh, how do you feel about producers making RJ Lamont type beats? Oh man, that's crazy. To even like hear that, it sounds crazy to me just to believe that like, you really, cause I'd be doubting myself with my own beats. So it's like, <laughs> dang, y'all really think my beats this good that y'all should really try to imitate it? So that part just shocks me. But if you want to learn, I can show you. For real? Like, I can just show you how to do it the right way. Cause they be doing it the wrong way on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. It's like they don't understand the process. No oh, shit. You ever yeah. thought about doing like a, a beat class or you know beat schools type shit like that? 
Um, I want to get into more content creation. I'm actually going to pull it out on some producers today so they can kind of show me how to do it. Hmm. But I always thought about it, but I never had an editor. So that's always a hell of a life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, even going back to like them making those type beats, it's more like it's validation that you're doing something right to where you're able to inspire and influence, you know, other producers that would want to make that type of shit. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy because I, I, I see it on YouTube all the time. I type it in sometimes when I'm, when I'm feeling inspired. I just type in some RJ type beats and I just do it the right way, how they did it. Yeah. And then I, uh, yeah. Uh, I saw you flick it up with uh, BLP uh, Kosher. Did you, did you guys get in the studio together? Yeah, you know, I've been with Kosher since the first day. Like, we met Kosher like months ago, like a long time ago when we did Mazeltron. So, okay. so I've been hanging out with Kosher since before he was like even like popping. Yeah. And yeah, that's. That's that's my brother. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Me and Coach are locked in for life. Hmm. Yeah. What's he, it like working in the studio with him? He, it's 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 funny because he he's serious. Like, he really can rap. And he really like he's really like. It's just you. It's just a time. Hmm. It's a very unique time to be with Kosher. <laughs> he got very unique, and he's from Florida, so you know Florida people are just crazy in general. Of course, yeah. So you just hear some of the craziest conversations ever. <laughs> yeah. That's my daughter's favorite rapper, too. Oh, for real, is it? <laughs> yeah. That's hard. The dude with the hair. <laughs> oh, she can't talk. <laughs> you gave her strict rules there. <laughs> um, so looking ahead, 2024, RJ, what's some plans, what's some goals you got set for yourself past the first three months, because we already hit that. <laughs> yeah, past the first three months, my, only, my, my main goals is to put out more music consistently and to do more content because I see content creations is crazy now. Absolutely, like, it's right. becoming like the craziest. It's becoming more, almost more important than music. Yeah. I was in my label meeting and they was telling me that the videos on my CD don't even matter. You, we just need you to be on TikTok. <laughs> just, I was like, what? Do you know how to work TikTok? I still can't figure that shit out. I cannot figure out TikTok. And I can't dance or sing, so that just make it even worse. <laughs> Yeah, content is where it's at. Like, you even look at Shannon Sharp. Like, this man went from national TV to doing, I think he was already doing the podcast. But that, see that shit, like, with Cat Williams, 15 million views in two days? In two days. Man, that what? is crazy. Shannon Sharp might be the greatest interviewer of all time. Absolutely. He man. caught his wave. He caught his wave a different way. But, yeah, I seen him on there with Shannon Sharp. Uh, Cat Williams, he, he was telling the truth. He was telling the truth. I rock with Cat Williams. Yeah, I kind of believe most of what he was saying. Like 90% of yeah, it, I believe. Yeah, there was some shit that's like, all right, bro, you might just be hating on this one. But yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of the shit that he was saying was adding some truth. I started to look up some YouTube videos. I, I, you know, the TikTok conspiracy started coming out. They started, I started seeing all the, all the stuff he was talking about. People were making TikTok videos about it, showing the, when they were stealing his jokes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like all that stuff is true. That, yeah. That's well documented, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, even to see like Ludacris had to respond to him, like with a freestyle. And right, I seen Ludacris, he brought Ludacris. Cat, it took Cat Williams to make Ludacris, Ludacris doesn't rap. rap anymore. What's he doing in the studio? Right. <laughs> <laughs> he literally went in there just to respond to Cat. That is crazy. Yeah. yeah it, like I said, content is where it's at, man. Yeah, man, that's what I'm trying to get into it. I'm trying to, that's really like my main goal for 2024, just content. Yeah. Just doing more content all the time. And you got the personality for it, too. You know, like a lot of producers, I'm sure you meet them. They're very introverted. Mm -hmm. They're very stuck to themselves. They're not even going to say hello to half the rappers that they produce for. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually got the outgoing personality for this shit, too. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. Anything else you're working on that you want to reveal that you're going to you know, let us in on? Uh, no, it ain't too much going on. Just it actually is a lot going on. But just putting out more albums putting out more CDs, touring, and taking care of my kids. That's really be the only goals. Outside of that, nah, I'm, I'm still working, working heavy. Got my laptop with me right now, I'm about to go to the studio. Okay. Any uh, new Detroit rappers we should be up on? Who's Bob? One Up T, he's starting to pop off real heavy. Okay. Uh, MJ40, Scrumble Man, they all in Dawson Militia was crying. Hmm. They starting to pop off. Um, who else is going crazy? Skilla, Skilla baby going oh, crazy. Uh, yeah, we forgot to talk about Skilla, man. Cause I know you, you guys been fucking with each other for a while too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I met Skilla when he was like 14. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> His parents used to bring him to my house um, like after school so like he could record. Like, really? So he wouldn't get in trouble. Shoot. 
So what's it been like watching him go, you know, obviously 14, but to one of the biggest rappers, you know. In the world. <laughs> yeah, these last two years, right? Man, I said. Jack seen... Harlow shining him out on songs. Like, Jack Harlow got a song called Skiller Baby. <laughs> it's like, this is wild. Man, no, it's crazy to see Skiller Baby, man. He's going crazy. Hmm. Out, of, out of everybody I seen, I, I seen him blow up the quickest. But like, you know, part of his last like CD, I was recording all of his music. Like I recorded oh, really? all of that music for the most part. Oh shit. So I've still been around and stuff. I just don't DJ for him, but I still produce for him and record for him. Okay, yeah. Uh, how do you like recording artists? Because I feel like some artists are probably really easy to record, some of them that could be a headache, man. I, if I don't like you, I'm not, well, I'm, I'm retired from that part okay. of life. <laughs> like, nah, I only record the people I want to record. Like, I have, it has to be like worth it. But I'm one of the best engineers like ever, like, like in life, like I know that much. But recording artists is a different process with different artists because everybody got their own mood. And like, mm -hmm. when you rap, you kind of like in your own little world. So you might say some mean stuff to the person recording you. Bro, I see it all the time here at the studio too. <laughs> it's like. Bro, I've seen that engineers get kicked out of a session before. Yeah, the engineer got kicked out? Yeah. I was like, get him out of here. Replace him with someone else. It's just Bruh. like, damn. I mean, I had guns pulled on me, but. <laughs> that might be worse. <laughs> like, man, can I just leave instead? No, What they like, pull a gun on you for? Because I was recording too slow and I was in my phone. <laughs> it was like, pay attention. Did you get a warning beforehand? Or no. Was, it just escalated like that. No, it just escalated like that. You might know who it was. You ain't got to say it. Uh -oh. <laughs> was that like during the early days of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I could definitely see that happening. Yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. But that's probably the worst experience I had. Uh, I remember one time, I remember one time we was in the studio and uh, Pay Will yelled at me too much uh, uh, while I was recording him. And he woke up the next day and when he came back to the studio, I had moved all my equipment to... Out. <laughs> I was like, I ain't putting up with this shit, bro. I'm gone. I moved my equipment across the hall. I rented another room. Oh, <laughs> did you really? I swear to God. That's wild, dude. Big Will was young, too. <laughs> the craziest part is he was like 18 and I was like 25. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> it's like, I ain't about to let no kid yell at me. <laughs> so, what do you think makes, uh, you know, the difference between a good engineer and like a bad engineer? Though? Somebody that can take people yelling at them. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Literally. If you can take people yelling at you all day, you can be a great engineer. Hmm. And that's the, it, actually the quickest way to get a Grammy. That is true. Yeah. Because yeah. you're probably just going to record something random and it's going to win a Grammy. Because <laughs> you're going to be recording everything. Hmm. Do you feel like engineers get their credit? You know, not officially like with the Grammy type shit, but like, you know, the whole recording process for a while, producers were underrated. You know what I'm saying? Engineers, like we talk about, they get shitted on all the time. Man. Yeah, yeah. They don't get their credit, but that job is more out of sight, out of mind type of job. Hmm. So it's like, it, it, I mean, but if you're a good engineer, everybody's going to know. They're going to be like, oh, that's, that's, yeah, we want him to sit in the seat. Yeah, that's why you see, like, these bigger artists, they find their engineer and they lock in with them. Like, yeah. they won't record with anyone else. Yeah, I'm kind of, like, you can kind of say I'm kind of like that, because, like, all the artists I'm around, I still engineer for all of them. Hmm. Yeah, and if like if we're somewhere like like out here, and y'all engineer fucking up and we gotta kick him out the room, I I gotta take over. <laughs> you can easily jump in that seat, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, are you very hands on when you're recording then? Like kind of giving input and in, you know suggestions as that, or does it depend on the artist? Uh, the Detroit music is a little different. You know, they just kind of freestyle. It. That's true. Yeah. So it's a little different. I'm more fast. Hmm. I can record fast. Like I can record a verse and five minutes type thing. That's so that's more my thing. I can record you fast and then we can go back and edit it later. Yeah. Yeah, I always say like, just record the shit. Yeah. You can go back and pre-mix it or whatever you gotta do at the end. So, yeah. yeah. All right, RJ, you want to give any shout outs before we wrap it up here, man? Uh, we gotta give a shout out to Wayne cause he came up here and shouted me out on his interview. <laughs> and when I told him I was coming up here, he said, make sure you shout me out. <laughs> but outside of Wayne, we got a shout out. Shout out Riley in the building, uh, Baby Tron, Skiller Baby, Sada Baby, who else? Peasy, uh, oh, everybody from Detroit. Detroit doing big as a whole. Like everybody from Detroit. Shout out to the whole Detroit murder bit and all of that stuff. And RJ Lamont is in the building though, always tripping. <laughs> yeah, it's like Detroit hasn't slowed down. It's just getting bigger and bigger. Like bigger, every day.
every day. Oh, you got to shout out Pootie. You can't never forget Pootie. Absolutely. Shout out to Pootie and Glenn, man. They just helped me get my new deal. Oh, for real? Mm -hmm. There you go, man. <laughs> cool. RJ, why the fuck you always tripping? Had to call the house, like, why the fuck you always slipping? Yeah, I just hit my favorite stripper. The only reason she let me fuck,